today we're going to be talking about the law of signs and more specifically the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case happens when we are given side, side, angle. And as we both know, backwards that spells a bad word. Okay, so we know that not all triangles, this was not a way to prove triangles congruent back from geometry. So it's so ambiguous because there's more than one option. There's actually six possible options for triangles. Okay, so our six possible options. First, I'll talk about the right side of this, where your angle is obtuse. So if your angle is right or obtuse, if side A is less than side B, side A isn't long enough. It's not going to be able to reach down to make a triangle. But if side A is bigger in an obtuse triangle, you're always going to have one triangle. And that is also true in non-right triangles or acute triangles. So if side A or the side opposite the angle that you're given, okay, so say you're given angle A, the side opposite of that is A. If that side is bigger, then you have one triangle. Okay, now, if you have, if you're given angle A, and I always draw it out, no matter what angle I'm given, I always draw the angle so that it looks like one of these pictures. If the side opposite is less than what the height is, now remember, the height in all of these triangles would be equal to um, let me set up a proportion down here. So the sine of the angle that we're given, in this case we're given angle A, the sine, <clears throat> the sine of angle A is the height <clears throat> over side B. So our height in this case is what I call the opposite side B times the sine of A. So you have to find the measurement of this height and compare it to A. If A is less than that, we have no triangle. Because remember, the shortest distance between a point and a line is the perpendicular distance. So if A is less than that shortest distance, we're going to have no triangle. If that shortest distance equals A, then we're going to have one triangle. Now, if this is the challenging one, two triangles, if the height is less is less than A, and A is less than B. So if A ranges between the height and side B, we're going to have two triangles. Okay, one of those triangles is right here. Okay, that's one possible triangle. The other possible triangle is this one here. Okay, that middle triangle isn't a triangle because that doesn't involve angle A at all. Okay, so let's do an example. And I'm going to keep this slide here pinned so that we can see which options we have. Okay, so determine the number of triangle, banner, triangle banners that can be formed by using the measures of A being 11, B equals 17, and A equals 30. So what I do is I always draw out no matter where I'm at, I draw my triangle with angle A down here, this side being 11, and this side B being 17. So I would have angle B down here and angle C up here. So I'm looking and angle A is 30. So I'm going to be looking for angle B, angle C, and side C. Okay, so we need to look and see how the height compares, which is, would be this distance, our shortest distance between point C and line AB, we need to see how that distance is going to compare to side A. 
So I know side A is 11. And side A is less than B, so I know for sure it's not one triangle. So I need to look and see how that compares to 17 times the sine of 30. So I do that in my calculator, and I get 17 times the sine of 30 to be 8.5. So 11 is greater than that. So what that means is this side here is going to be able to swing down and make one triangle, swing over, and make another triangle. Okay? So what you're going to do is once you've discovered that it's two triangles, draw a line down the center, okay? One triangle, two triangles, so that I know that it's two triangles. Now set up your law of sines to solve for your first triangle. So I do the sine of 30 over 11 equals the first angle I find is B, because that's the side that I'm given, sine of B over 17. So I cross multiply and I get 17 sine of 30 over 11 equals the sine of B. Now I find this decimal in my calculator. And that is 0.7727. Remember, you have to do inverse sine of that number to get the actual angle. So for angle B, I get 50.6, running to the nearest tenth. I subtract from 180, so I do 180 minus 30 minus 50.6 to get 99.4. Excuse me. Now that I know all of that, I can set up my law of sines to find side C. So the sine of 30 over 11 equals the sine of angle C, 99.4 over side C. So I cross multiply, I divide, I find side C to be 21.7. Now, finding your second triangle. To find your second triangle, the first angle that you found in the first triangle, I found B first in my first triangle. I take that angle there. I subtract from 180. So the first angle I found, so angle B in my second triangle, I take 180 minus 50.6 to get the angle in our second triangle. So I do that, I get 129.4. Okay? Now to find angle C. It's a whole new triangle. Okay, now I'm solving for this triangle here. Where if you think about it, this side is 11. Because A can swing in. B is still 17. I found this obtuse angle. To find angle C, we know two of the angles. We know one of them is 30. We know one is 129. So subtract from 180 and get 20.6. Now to find side C. All you have to do is set up your law of sines just with this new triangle. So I have the sine of 30 over 11 equals the sine of angle C in our new triangle is 20.6 over side C, so I go through and I solve that, and I get 7.7. 7. Okay, so that's how we find our triangles. 
And there was an app that I found that can find these two triangles for me. And there's a visual of the two triangles all solved out for me. And that's what the answers that we got. Okay, next example. Determine the number of triangular banners that can be formed using the measurements A equals 9, B equals 17, and A equals 43. Solve the triangles, round to the nearest tenth. Okay. Draw out your triangle. I have angle A down here, which is 43. Side A is opposite of that, so that is 9. Side B is 17. Okay. So I look and I see, okay, side A is less than B, so it's not one triangle. It's not right or obtuse. So it's one of these possibilities. So I look and I see, how does the side opposite compare with this height? Because remember that height is the shortest distance that I could possibly have. Well, that height is always the opposite side, 17 times the sine of 43. Okay, so now I do 17 times the sine of 43, and I get 11.6. So 9 is less than that. So my shortest distance here that I could possibly have for a side is 11.6. 9 is less than that. It's too short. It's not going to be able to swing down and make a triangle. So this is going to be no triangle. What you could also do is if you set up the law of sines and you go through and you solve, you get side of 43 over 9 is equal to the sine. Down here, this would be, since this is side B, this would be angle B. I cross multiply, I get 17 times the sine of 43 over 9 equals sine of B. So when I type that in my calculator, I get 1.288 equals the sine of B. I do the inverse sine of 1.288. In my calculator, that gives me an error. Error. Okay. So, giving me that error tells me that I have no triangle. And I want you guys to write no triangle. Don't write error on a test or a quiz. Okay, next example. Determine the number of triangle banners that can be formed using the measurements of B equaling 25, C equaling 22, and B equaling 56. Now, I've given us different angles, okay? All of these were working assuming that we had angle A, okay? I've given us different angles. It doesn't matter, though. As long as you set up your picture. So my angle B now, instead of angle A, it's just angle B. It's just a different letter. I have 56 down there. My side B is 25. Side C, 22. Okay? So, all I'm doing is I just rearrange things. But I always draw it so that it looks like one of these pictures because this is what I kind of understand. So, now I look and I see, okay, look, the opposite side, side B, is bigger than this adjacent side. That's this case right here. Okay? This side here, A, in our case it's B, is bigger than this side. So we have one triangle. That makes our life easy. So when I would actually draw this triangle down, down here we would have side C. I'm sorry, angle C. Up here is A. Over here is side A. So I have to find angle A, angle C, and side A. This is actually pretty easy. It's just a law of signs. So set up your law of signs. Of 
Cross multiply both sides by 22. Okay, so plugging that in my calculator, I get point seven two nine equals the sine of C. Now make sure you do inverse sine of that to get what the angle equals. When I do my inverse sine to get angle C, I get forty six. Point eight. Now to get angle A, you subtract 46.8 and 56 from 180, and we get 77.2. Now to find side A, all we do is we set up our law of sines. Sine of 56 over 25 is equal to the sine, since I'm looking for side A, a, this has to be 77.2. I cross multiply. A ends up being 29.4. Okay, here are your lesson questions. And I've kind of kept this slide up for you guys so that can help you. And I want you guys to actually try the lesson questions. Just don't click on any old answer. I want you guys to actually try and find them. Okay? Determine which one, how many triangles there are from that given information. Okay? And again, I've left this slide up so you guys can reference back to it.